Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Uh, I'm here. Yeah, today was rough. Um, Lulu had a really rough morning. You know, she's getting older. Um, she took up a lot of my time this morning. Um, and I gotta say sorry because I completely forgot about Lunch Bunch today. And I'm beating myself up about it because I didn't put it in the calendar and I've been relying on a calendar to tell me what each day is going to look like and I just completely forgot. So if you were scheduled on today's lunch bunch, please hear me say I'm sorry. It is rescheduled for tomorrow at noon. Our lunch bunch for Monday is still on. Um, so today's lunch bunch that's moved to tomorrow at noon before our class meeting was Gretchen, Emma, Sophie, and Will Moylan. And then on Monday, I've got Anna, Maya Davis, and Cam. All right, and then I will continue doing lunch bunches for the last two weeks of school. All right, um, coming up on May 19th, it's a Tuesday. I hope I got that date right. May, coming up on May 19th, it's our teacher parade. Now, we can only have a small amount of cards, we, cars in the parade. We have like 50 staff at the elementary school. So unfortunately, not every teacher can be there. But I hope you come to the parade and see if I'm in it uh, and keep an eye peeled for Miss Jaber and the other specialist teachers. And um, But again, if you don't see one of your favorite teachers, know that they wish they could be there, but we just, we couldn't. There's not enough space for us uh, to have that many cars. Um, we'd cause a huge traffic jam, I guess. Um, so that's coming up. Um, what else did I want to tell you today? All of the new lessons for the week came out. Um, I am getting ready to start. I'll be this week reading your fairy tales because this week you're going to be writing your beginning, middles, and end. So I'm going to be reading the actual fairy tales you write, which I'm excited about. And um, in reading, you're going to be learning about text structures. And in social studies, you are going to be learning about famous Missourians. Okay? Do you know anybody famous from Missouri? It's pretty fascinating who you'll find out is from this lovely state. Uh, and then I'm not really sure what's going on in math and science. You tell me. I heard you're doing long division. Is that right? Third graders? What? Am I right? <laughs> I hope I'm right. All right, guys. We are finishing the wild robot today. I've said that I think the last two videos and I couldn't get to the end. But today we got to do it. So buckle up, get a blanket, grab some popcorn and be entertained. I was just talking to Austin. I think we have one more Rico that we need to combat and take over. Okay, chapter 74, The Click. Four robot hands were clamped around the rifle. Rico 1 loomed above. Roz lay below, camouflaged in seaweed. For a moment, all was still, and then the hunter suddenly lurched and twisted as he tried the rip to rip the rifle away from his target. But Roz held on. Seaweed fell from her body as she was lifted right off the ground. Her legs dangled in the air until she pounded a foot and a stump against the hunter's broad chest, leaned back, and pulled on the rifle with all her strength. Waves crashed as the robots grappled for the weapon, but Roz was no match for Rico 1. The hunter was too big and too brutal. Roz could feel her body being pulled apart, but she could also feel the rifle being pulled apart. A faint glow appeared between her hands. The glow grew brighter and brighter, and then a blinding explosion launched the robots in opposite directions. When the smoke cleared, shards of the rifle were everywhere. Rico One's body was pocked with holes, and one arm was charred and crippled. Roz's arm and legs had been blown completely off. She was now just... Um, a torso and a head. Inside her computer brain, our robot's survival instincts were blaring. Her battered body simply could not take this. Her battered body simply could not take any more damage. Clearly, Roz was not designed for combat, but the Rico was. He pulled himself up to his feet and bobbled toward his target. Roz wanted to get up and run away, but without arms and legs, our robot couldn't move. She could only speak. Please do not deactivate me, she said. Rico 1 ignored her. His blocky hand reached past her face and touched the back of her head. Click. Chapter 75, The Last Rifle. 
With the target deactivated, Rico-1 calmly moved on to the next phase of his mission. He limped through the gravesite and began collecting every single robot part. He splashed into the shallows and returned with a foot. He shook the sand from a cracked torso. He pulled a head out from a tide pool. Each part was then piled around Liza, Raza's lifeless body. Oh my gosh. Brightbell watched in horror as his mother slowly disappeared under a pile of parts. Roz looked just like the dead robots, but she wasn't dead. She had simply been shut down. Don't do it, Bright Bill! The flock tried to stop their leader. It's too dangerous! But the goose was determined to bring his poor mother back to life. Bright Bill crouched low to the ground and slowly moved toward the pile of robots, and when Rico 1 limped away to collect another part, Bright Bill sprinted over the rocks, pushed past arms and legs, and squeezed into the pile. Click. A muffled voice echoed across the shore. Hello, I am Razum, Unit 7134, but you may call me Raz. Bright Bill hugged his mother's face as her computer brain rebooted. Mama, Mama, wake up! What happened? She, fin she said finally. Where is Rico? He's coming this way. What were you thinking, Bright Bill? You must leave now before he kills us both. I'm scared, Mama, cried the goose. I didn't know what to do. Heavy footsteps stomped toward them. Robot parts were knocked aside, and then Rico One looked down with his glowing eyes. Brightbill tried to squirm away, but thick fingers locked around him like a cage. Mama, help! cried Brightbill as he was pulled up from the pile. Please do not hurt my son, begged Roz. He's harmless. Rico One paid no attention to Roz. He just held the goose in his giant hand, ready to crush the life out of him. Mist swirled in the breeze. Waves sloshed against the rocks. Seagulls circled above. No, not seagulls. Vultures. And one of them clutched something silver in his talons. The vultures spiraled down and Rico III's rifle clattered onto the shore. Geese and otters quickly surrounded the rifle. They squawked and squeaked and fumbled with the weapon, trying to aim the clunky thing. The hunter was confused. How had those animals gotten a rifle? Oh, remember the raccoons grabbed the rifle and put it in Buck's um, antlers? They did know. The geese had seen a trigger pulled before. Oh, yes, when they were on the mainland in the greenhouse, the farmer. A beam of light briefly flashed through the gloom. At first, it seemed as if nothing had happened, but a moment later, Rico's one chest began glowing a brilliant orange, and then it was melting and oozing down his front, and soon there was a wide, gaping hole in the middle of his torso. His hand suddenly unclenched, and Bright Bill fluttered away. Seawater sprayed over the gravesite, and steam hissed up from the Rico's scorching hot guts. He shook and twitched and collapsed beside Roz. Rico one turned his face to Roz and spoke in a quiet, garbled voice. More Ricos will c c come for you, and if you d d destroy them, some more will c come. The makers will not rest until all robots have been been retrieved. When? When will they come? said Roz. How long do we have? You c can st st still be fixed, Roz. Go to the airship. B bring, bring all the robot parts with you. The ship knows what to do, 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 do. And his voice went silent. His eyes went dark. Rico 1 was dead. Chapter 76, The Broken Robot Geese and otters were bustling all around Roz. They were pulling arms and legs from the robot pile and pressing them against her body. They were hoping to hear thwip sounds and that the robot limbs would snap right into place and Roz would return to her old self and life on the island would go back and the island would go back to normal. But nothing happened. No matter what they did, the lime the limbs wouldn't attach. Our robot's body was too badly damaged. I'm sorry, Ma, said Bright Bill, his voice trembling. I thought this would work. It's okay, son said Roz calmly. I'm lucky I can still think and speak. The animals tried to smile at their poor friend, but they couldn't hide their sadness. Roz was a mangled wreck, and there was nothing they could do to fix her. The robot wanted to be strong for her son and her friends, and she wanted to ease their worried minds and tell them everything would be fine. But Roz knew that everything would not be fine. She looked down at her broken body. Then she looked up at the geese and the otters and said, I'll need some help getting home. Chapter 77, The Meeting Strong, nimble creatures carried Roz up the sea cliffs and across the island. They carefully propped her up inside the nest. They built a fire, and then they left the robot with her son. Roz and Brightbill sat there, staring at the flames, until the goose finally said, 
Do you need anything, Ma? I could really use some new arms and legs, the robot chuckled at her own bad joke. This isn't funny, cried the goose. My mother is broken and I don't know what to do about it. Oh, I'm sorry for joking. Roz adjusted her voice to a more serious tone. Sorry, I was distracted. I know you want to fix me, but there's nothing anyone here can do. At these words, her son looked away. Brightville, I'm afraid we have some difficult decisions to make. I think you should arrange a meeting. Lulu, it's okay. It's okay. I might have to stop here for a minute. I'll come back on and finish the book in just a sec. All right, I checked in with the dogs and everything was fine. There was just a uh, person walking by and they needed to alert me of that. Um, okay. Okay, so they're going to get their friends to get some advice. The goose disappeared out the door and soon Roz's oldest and wisest friends were on their way. Loudwing was the first to arrive. She limped into the lodge on her injured foot and sat close to her robot friend. Mr. Beaver appeared next, followed by Fink and Swooper. Then Tawny curled up on the floor. Mother Bear was too badly hurt to make that journey, so Nettle came in her place. She sat in the garden with her enormous head jutting in through the doorway. Brightbill returned with Chit Chat, who was nursing her burned tail. The last one to crawl in was Crag, that old turtle. Once everyone was there, the meeting began. The group talked all through the night. They discussed the Ricos. They discussed what to do about Roz. They discussed how to keep the island safe. There were stark differences of opinion and tempers flared, but by daybreak, the group had agreed to a plan of action. That morning, the dawn truce didn't take place in the Great Meadow. Instead, it took place in a small meadow by the foot of a mountain. In front of the airship, weary animals quietly hobbled into the clearing. The only sounds came from a gurgling brook that wound through the gathering and right past our robot. Roz sat in the wet grass. She was leaning against a rock. She looked so sad and frail. However, she still had her thoughts and her words, and for the moment, that was all she needed. Good morning, animals of the island. Roz's voice filled the meadow. I must look strange to you all beaten up like this, but I hope I still sound like your old friend. Hundreds of heads nodded. You fought bravely yesterday. You risked your lives defending me, and I am eternally grateful. But many of our friends were wounded. Some may not recover, and there's worse news. Before the last Rico died, he told me that more of his kind will come to our island. They might already be on the move, and even if we defeat them, still more will come. My makers will not rest until all of their property has been retrieved. They want the dead robots. They want the broken parts. They want me. The crowd was silent. But I care about this island far too much to put any more lives in danger, and so, my friends, I must leave. Voices cried out, Don't go, Roz! Next time we'll be prepared. We risked our lives so you could stay. I hear you. The robot's voice cut through the, dim, the den. But look at me. My body is ruined, and the Rico said that the only ones who can help me are my makers. What if he lied? Howled a, vo howled a voice. You can't trust these monsters. You are right, said Roz. He might have been lying. There may be no hope for me, but that is a chance I have to take. Animals, you taught me to be wild. I want to be wild again, and so I must try to get the repairs I need. It is for the good of me and the island that I return to my makers. A calm settled down over the crowd. They knew Roz was right. Chapter 78. Farewell. Oh, Lord, I hope I don't cry. Our robot had an army of animals at her command, and she asked them to bring every robot part and rifle back to the airship. Absolutely everything had to go. It was the only way to be sure that the Ricos would ever come back, would never come back. The island animals had no trouble locating the remains of the dead robots. Retrieving those remains took a bit more effort, but they were up to the challenge. Teams of clever creatures returned with robot parts of different shapes and sizes. Smashed heads and broken rifles and twisted tubes and heavy bodies were all loaded into the ship until the entire island had been cleared. Even the tiniest scraps were collected. It's amazing what an army of animals can do. A light mist was falling when they finally heaved Roz through the ship's doorway. Her head slowly turned around to face the crowd of geese and beavers and owls and insects and foxes and raccoons and vultures and moose and bears and opossums and fish and deer and otters and turtles and woodpeckers and squirrels and frogs and hares and on and on and on. Every animal on the island would have 
had come to give the robot a proper send-off. Goodbye, you wild animals, Roz's voice echoed through the gray mist. The wild animals smiled, and then a few of them started to roar. Then more started to screech, and then more started howling and chirping and grunting. Soon, every creature was hollering goodbye to Roz. The chorus of wild voices grew louder and louder, shaking the robot's body, rattling the ship, booming across the island and up into the clouds, and then their voices gradually died down to silence. Bright Bill fluttered up his mother's shoulder. You understand why I must leave, said the robot. I understand, sniffled the goose. More Ricos could be headed here right now. I just do not know. There's so much I don't know. I think it's time I got some answers. But will I ever see you again, said Bright Bill, wiping his eyes. You are my son. This is my home, said Roz. I'll do everything in my power to return. Bright Bill hugged his mother's worn face. I love you, Mama. I love you, son. The goose fluttered back to his flock. The robot took one last look at her home. The door hummed close. The door hummed closed. Chapter 79, The Departure. The airship's engines automatically fire up. Then the ship slowly floated above the island, turned to the south, and disappeared into the clouds. Our story ends in the sky, where a robot was being whisked away from the only home she had ever known. As Roz sat in the airship, broken and alone and speeding toward a mysterious future, she looked back at her miraculous past. Reader, it must seem impossible that our robot could have changed so much. Maybe the Ricos were right. Maybe Roz really was defective, and some glitch in her programming had caused her to accidentally become a wild robot. Or maybe Roz was designed to think and learn and change. She had simply done those things better than anyone could have imagined. However it happened, Roz felt lucky to have lived such an amazing life, and every moment had been recorded in her computer brain. Even her earliest memories were perfectly clear. She could still see the sun shining through the gash in her crate. She could still hear the waves crashing against the shore. She could still smell the salt water and the pine trees. Would she ever see and hear and smell those things again? Would she ever again climb a mountain or build a lodge or play with a goose? Not just a goose, her son! Bright Bill had been Roz's son from the moment she picked up his egg. She had saved him from certain death, and then he had saved her. He was the reason Roz had lived so well for so long. And if she wanted to continue living, if she wanted to be wild again, she needed to be with her family and her friends on her island. So as Roz raced through the sky, she began computing a plan. She would get the repairs she needed. She would escape from her new life. She would find her way back home. That's it. That's the end. She's going to the mainland. What do you think happens in the second book? We sure can learn a lot from Roz about family and friendship and working together. Did you guys like that book? I hope you did. I'm going to read you a note from the author tomorrow and um, we'll start Edward Tulane as well. Oh, if I haven't told you, we're going to read Edward Tulane next. And I know some of you have read it already, but read it again with me because you will learn um, or you'll pick up on things that you may have missed over the first time you read it. All right. Again, have a great Wednesday, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Let me know if you need help with any of the new lessons.